Okay, guys, this is going to be a real quick Bourne Harbor cycle question, okay? Now, this was from an AQA A-level chemistry paper, if you want to check it out yourself. It was from paper 1, June 2018, okay? For you guys studying for the 2022 exams, it's on the advanced spec for paper 3, the thermodynamics topic, so I thought I'd chuck in some questions for that. And all you future guys that are doing this for paper 1, best of luck, <laughs> wherever you are, whatever year you're in. Um, so... Normally, what you need to do for the Bourne Harbor cycle questions, okay, is you normally need to fill in one of the blanks, okay, one of the enthalpy change equation blanks. Um, but this case, they just completely skipped over that and they just want our three marker for us to calculate the electron affinity of chlorine, okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to locate on this on this Bourne Harbor cycle which of these do they want us to do, okay. Electron affinity of chlorine is going to be this right here, okay, this arrow here. So, and that's just because the chlorine right here is gaining these two electrons onto itself, electron affinity. There's two moles of chlorine, so each of the mole is going to gain one electron each, forming our 2Cl minus ion, okay? Um, now, within these born harbor cycles, what you can do is you can equate both sides. So you can add up all of this, guys, add up all of this, and then make this x or whatever algebraic value you want, rearrange it, solve it, and that will give us our value. Now, when you do it in this way, completely fine to do. However, it doesn't give you um, a value whether it's positive or negative. So what you have to do is you have to look at the Born Harbor cycle and think to yourself, okay, is this a positive arrow or is it a negative arrow? And that will determine whether it's endo or exothermic, okay? So add my question mark back in there. And what I'm gonna do is, I like to do it slightly differently, okay? You can you can do that completely fine um, for, you, for those of you that like to do it that way. I like to do it this way, okay? So I mark where I'm starting, mark where I'm finishing, and go all the way around, okay? So ultimately, what's happening here is we're going all the way around to here, okay? We're starting from this energy level, ending at this one, which is going all the way around instead. What I'm gonna do here real quick is just add in all our values, okay? And then sort of label where all of our enthalpy changes are. So this one right here is gonna be real easy. It's gonna be our exothermic value of the enthalpy of formation, okay? Covalent sides here, Gaseous uh, standard state elements forming this compound right here. So this is going to be minus 828. Okay, so I'm just going to tick that off. Now this right here is going to be our lattice formation. We're going from gaseous ions into an ionic compound, uh, solid ionic lattice. Tick that off the table as well, just so we keep a track of it. Next one is going to go from a solid strontium into a gaseous strontium. Therefore, it's our atomization. So that's our plus 164 right there, 164. Tick that off as well. Enthalpy of atomization of chlorine is 1 to 1. So we're going from a chlorine diatomic molecule into a single atomic chlorine, okay? So atomization of chlorine right here. Now, we actually have to double this up because ultimately, if it was a half Cl2 to a Cl, like one mole like that, that would be fine to leave it like that, but that's not the case, okay? Remember that with enthalpy change, there's always kilojoules or energy per one mole. But this time, it's two moles, okay? So we're gonna have to double that up. So I'm just gonna put a two here, and then in our brackets, one, two, one. I'm gonna add a plus there, just so we realize that for when we're doing the calculations. Okay, next up is our first ionization energy of strontium. So that's just gonna be our plus five, four, eight. Next up, second ionization energy plus 1060. Okay, easy peasy, tick those guys both off. And now I just have to do my calculation, okay? So I'm gonna say right here, enthalpy of electron affinity one of our chloride ion is going to be starting here, okay? So we're gonna start here, we're gonna go against this arrow, okay? So if you're not too aware, most of you probably are, if you go against an arrow in an energy cycle, whether that's a Hess cycle, whatever it may be, Bourne Harbor, you're gonna go, uh, you're going to have to reverse the sign of that arrow. So it's going to be minus 1060 as our first one against this arrow, minus 548 against this arrow as well, minus two lots of 121 against this arrow, minus 164 with this arrow this time. Okay, so we're going to keep it as minus 828. And then we're going against this arrow, so it's going to be plus 2112. Okay, simple as that. Now, when you add this up into your calculator, you're going to get a value of minus 730. Okay, so is this our final answer? No, it's not, okay? So, what we have here in this enthalpy change right here, this arrow ultimately has two lots of 
the electron affinity. So we have two moles of atomic chlorine becoming two moles of chloride ions. So each of these moles of chlorine has gained one electron. Therefore, this value are minus 730 ultimately has to just be divided by two to get it to be one single chlorine atom being uh, gaining an electron here, okay? So I'm just gonna say divide by two equals, put that in your calculator, and it's gonna be minus 365. And that's for one chlorine atom, okay? So minus 365, three marks in the bag, let's go. Next question then. So I'm going through this one quite quickly, but hopefully it's making sense to you guys. It's more of just a revision video for the advanced students that, that already understand the topic quite well. So 1.2 then, draw a line from each substance to the enthalpy of lattice formation of that substance. Okay, so there's some, there's some brief theory here that we need to keep in mind, okay? Now, what determines the size of the enthalpy of lattice formation and alternatively enthalpy of lattice dissociation? Okay, so we have three ionic compounds here, magnesium chloride, magnesium oxide, and barium chloride, okay? All group twos, and then the only difference here is that our oxygen is a two minus, and our halogen, uh, sorry, halide, I should say, our Cl2 is a one minus, okay? Regarding their ions, because all of these are ionic. That's what you have to keep in mind. Anytime we're dealing with lattices, always ionic, okay? So, what ultimately impacts the strength or the size of this lattice formation enthalpy? And that's always going to be the radii or the size of the ion. So I'm gonna bullet point that down here. Um, size of ion or ionic radii. Okay, the smaller the value of this, so the smaller the ion, the smaller the ionic radius or radii, the greater the lattice enthalpy is going to be. Okay, hopefully you guys can remember that. Next up then, we've dealt with the size of the ion. The next thing is the charge, okay, the ionic charge. Ionic charge. Okay, and this is kind of the opposite, okay. The greater the charge, the greater the strength of the lattice enthalpy, okay. So I'm going to say greater lattice enthalpy, okay. So maybe I should say smaller, smaller, and then greater if that wasn't clear. Okay, so out of these three ionic compounds, I'm actually gonna split this up into their constituent ions, and then we can join these up, okay? So Mg2+, plus, and then we have two lots of the Cl-. minus. Okay, that's essentially what happens here. Now, magnesium oxide, we have Mg2+, plus, and then one lot of the O2-, minus. okay? Then barium chloride, we have Ba2+, plus, and then we're gonna have our Cl-, minus, two lots of that. Okay, so we split them up into their ions, and what we can do is you can either use your periodic table to look at the ion sizes, okay? Or you may just remember that barium is lower down in the group than magnesium, so therefore it's gonna be a bigger ion. Okay, so out of magnesium chloride then, and barium chloride, we should know straight away that magnesium chloride is going to be a larger lattice enthalpy, okay? Now, when I say larger, I essentially mean more negative, but hopefully you understood where I was going with that. So we ticked off MgCl2 and barium Cl2, okay? Now I haven't lined these up with the enthalpy of lattice formation yet, just because I'm gonna explain the magnesium oxide, okay? So magnesium chloride and magnesium oxide are the ones we have to ultimately compare to determine which is higher. So first off then, chloride ions, are these larger or smaller than oxygen ions? Okay, these are actually larger, all right? So that we already know straight away that this is gonna be more exothermic or uh, have a higher enthalpy of lattice formation, okay? Also, the charge, okay, we have a Cl minus with a one minus charge, and then we have an oxygen with a two minus charge. So ultimately, this has to be the highest one, okay? So I'm gonna label this up. This is one, this is two, and this is three, and then all I'm gonna have to do is match them, match them up with the enthalpy uh, right over here, okay? So magnesium oxide is gonna be the highest, so I'll do that right here. And then next up is our magnesium chloride, next highest is gonna be here, and then our barium chloride is gonna be the lowest right there, okay? So just keep in mind the size of the ion, the smaller the ion, the greater the lattice enthalpy, and the greater the ionic charge, the greater the lattice enthalpy, kind of opposites. But hopefully, if you can remember those two key points, you should be completely fine with explaining all the types of lattice enthalpy questions that come up regarding different compounds. 
So real quick one, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you found it helpful. Just a little bit on Born Harbor Cycles and some theory here on lattice formation. But if you did learn something, be sure to like the video. Really helps the channel grow. Subscribe for future maths and science content. Best of luck in your exams, guys. Peace.